Before the Big Bang, one must be careful with definitions. If the Big Bang is defined as the time when the universe was extremely hot and dense, then evidence supports this because we can observe it in the sky. The best theory explaining how the universe reached this state suggests that there was a time before it, known as inflation. Scientists have long pondered what existed before the Big Bang, and recent discoveries have revealed an astonishing possibility. Brian Cox has suggested that something terrifying existed prior to the Big Bang. The universe, in a sense, was cold and empty, expanding at an extremely rapid pace before slowing down. The energy driving this expansion was released into space, heating it up and forming the particles that make up everything today. This is what we call the Big Bang. This concept extends into a theory known as eternal inflation, which proposes that inflation continues indefinitely, stopping in certain regions to create universes. This suggests that our universe is just one of many, forming part of an infinite fractal multiverse. The notion of absolute nothingness appears more theoretical than real, as even in a supposedly empty universe, energy continues to exist. Despite removing all matter, radiation, and even external influences, quantum fields and fundamental physical laws endure, meaning true nothingness is impossible. The universe never truly reaches a void state, and something always persists. Even in an empty universe, expansion would still generate radiation, challenging our conventional understanding of emptiness. Scientists question whether the universe could have originated from nothing, but physics suggests that an absolute void cannot exist. Even if all quantum fields reached their lowest possible energy state, a residual zero-point energy would still remain. As the universe expands, cooling over time, radiation will eventually dominate, leaving dark energy as the primary force shaping cosmic evolution. Before the Big Bang, during the period of cosmic inflation, the universe expanded rapidly due to inflationary field energy, similar to today's dark energy but much stronger. This raises fundamental questions about the universe's origins. Did time have a beginning? Understanding this requires separating three key ideas. The hot Big Bang as a description of our universe's early state, cosmic inflation as the process that set the stage for the Big Bang, and the broader question of the ultimate beginning. In the early 20th century, major discoveries shaped our understanding of cosmic expansion. Alexander Friedman showed through Einstein's equations that a universe filled with matter and energy could not be static but must either expand or contract. Observations by Henrietta Leavitt and Edwin Hubble confirmed that galaxies were moving away from us, indicating that space itself was expanding. Rewinding this expansion suggests that the universe was once denser, hotter, and ultimately reached a state of infinite density and temperature, leading to the original idea of the Big Bang. This theory predicted key features of the early universe, including cosmic expansion, the formation of structures like galaxies over time, and the existence of the cosmic microwave background radiation. These predictions were later confirmed, making the Big Bang theory the dominant explanation for the universe's early history. However, by the 1960s and 1970s, certain paradoxes emerged that the Big Bang alone could not explain. The horizon problem questions why regions of the universe that never interacted appear to have uniform temperatures. The flatness problem asks why the universe's expansion and gravitational forces are so precisely balanced. The monopole problem challenges why no exotic high-energy remnants from the early universe, such as magnetic monopoles, have been found. In 1980, Alan Goose proposed inflation as a solution to these puzzles. Inflation suggests that an early phase of rapid expansion could have stretched the universe, explaining its uniformity and apparent flatness while also diluting any exotic relics. This theory has since become central to modern cosmology. Preventing the universe from reaching excessively high energies or temperatures, the maximum temperature reached after inflation avoids the formation of these remnants. Inflation not only explains these phenomena but also presents a compelling alternative to the standard hot Big Bang model. Additionally, a further issue was addressed to demonstrate how a uniform and isotropic early universe could be reinstated after inflation. It became evident that inflation could act as a quantum mechanism for seeding the universe with initial imperfections or the origins of cosmic structure, ultimately leading to the intricate formations we see today. In the 1980s, 
inflation theory made precise and testable forecasts about the beginnings of cosmic structure that should be detectable in both the cosmic microwave background and the large-scale layout of the universe. These forecasts, crafted decades ago, have been validated by observations spanning from the 1990s to the present day, encompassing an almost, though not entirely, scale-invariant spectrum of imperfections, variations in density and temperature, and density irregularities that are entirely adiabatic and not at all isocurvature. In essence, fluctuations on scales larger than what a signal traveling at the speed of light in an expanding universe could generate and a maximum temperature limit for the universe during the hot Big Bang are notably smaller than the Planck scale. Because inflation involves a rapid expansion of space rather than culminating in a singularity like the original model for the Big Bang, it presents an alternative depiction of the beginning. Instead of time and space gradually emerging from a single state, inflation proposes a rapid expansion leading to the Big Bang. This raises a fundamental question about the actual beginning of the universe, if such a notion even makes sense within the framework of the hot Big Bang. Without inflation, we could trace back and reach a singular state where the universe's size approaches zero in a finite time. However, inflation complicates this scenario. Its exponential growth makes it challenging to trace back to a singularity size since reaching a state where the universe had zero size would require an infinite amount of time due to the exponential nature of inflation. Adding to the complexity the observable evidence for inflation, such as quantum fluctuations leaving imprints on our visible universe, corresponds to just the final 10 superscript 3 superscript 2 seconds before inflation leads to the hot Big Bang. If we were hoping to delay the start of an earlier grand event, inflation ruins those hopes. There's nothing observable that gives us clues about what, if anything, caused inflation. A fascinating aspect of inflation is called eternal inflation. When exploring how inflation works, almost any model that effectively addresses the issues with the original Big Bang and creates the necessary quantum effects to initiate the universe with imperfections will result in a scenario where, while inflation ends in certain areas like our own, there will be countless more surrounding regions where inflation continues, creating more space that keeps expanding. Essentially, once inflation starts, it wipes out any information about what existed before, and the inflationary state will persist indefinitely into the future. At times, quantum fluctuations akin to those shaping the universe's structure cause certain areas where inflation ceases, resulting in a hot Big Bang. However, these regions are far fewer compared to those where inflation persists indefinitely. Notably, no two separate regions with Big Bangs will ever overlap because the expanding universe drives them apart. Despite its appeal, eternal inflation has limitations. It's eternal only into the future, not into the past. In fact, it's been demonstrated that inflationary spacetime doesn't extend into the past infinitely and must have originated from a prior non-inflationary and possibly singular state. The issue of past time-like incompleteness can't be avoided by considering alternatives like bouncing cosmologies or cyclic cosmologies, as they face similar challenges. However, this doesn't necessarily imply that the universe originated from a singularity. While it could have, it's not a strict necessity. For example, one can envision a spacetime resembling the past where inflation takes place by modeling the universe's expansion rate through a scale factor composed of a growing exponential plus a constant rather than just a pure growing exponential. In essence, the hot Big Bang, while our most accurate model of the early universe, wasn't its absolute genesis. There's a limit on how far back we can extrapolate the temperature and density of a matter and radiation-filled universe. Prior to the hot Big Bang, there existed a period of cosmic inflation which initiated and led to the hot Big Bang. During inflation, space was saturated with energy, devoid of matter and radiation, and expanded exponentially. However, inflation couldn't have persisted indefinitely and must have emerged from some pre-existing non-inflationary state. Unfortunately, our knowledge of this earlier state is limited, aside from knowing many things it couldn't have been. We don't live in a universe where matter drifts in empty space. We live in a universe filled with energy fields that interact to form everything we see. When considering the vastness of emptiness, the endless void, and mortality, it's striking how the idea of nothingness can provoke such fear. Did William Shatner, at 90, go on a space journey expecting to find the universe's mysteries, only to realize there was no mystery or grandeur? He encountered only death witnessing a cold, dark, black void unlike any darkness on Earth. It was overwhelming and all-encompassing. 
Yet, in another paradox of nothingness, Shatner wasn't truly observing a void. Rather, he was looking at a vacuum where a lot was happening that he couldn't see. Quantum field theory is one of the most accurate theories in physics, known for predicting the outcomes of many experiments. According to this theory, the universe is not made of matter floating in empty space but of energy fields that permeate space and interact, creating everything we observe, including ourselves. Some physicists describe these fields as fluid-like, similar to water in a pool, while others compare them to a room filled with varying levels of energy, like a field of distributed heat. These fields are constantly moving due to quantum fluctuations, brief changes in energy similar to ripples in a wave caused by external forces exciting the particles within the field. For example, an electromagnet can cause changes in an electromagnetic field. Even in their lowest state, known as the vacuum state, fields remain active. Pairs of positive and negative particles continuously borrow energy from the vacuum, briefly appear, and then disappear, returning the energy. These temporary entities are called virtual particles. When the field is excited or at a higher energy level, it has ripples or waves that produce elementary particles that persist and interact with each other, forming the world we know. The type of particles created depends on the field. Different matter particles are associated with specific types of fermions, such as electrons, up quarks, down quarks, and neutrinos, which are fundamental components of all atoms. These fermions interact through three types of fields, electromagnetism involving photons, the strong nuclear force involving gluons, and the weak nuclear force involving W and Z bosons. According to Cambridge theoretical physicist David Tong, without these force fields, Matter particles would drift aimlessly in the universe without interactions or interesting behaviors. Then there's the Higgs field, which Tong compares to molasses spread throughout the universe. The Higgs field gives mass to other particles, stopping them from moving at the speed of light. Tong notes that this comparison is not perfect because it suggests friction, while in reality, different particles interact with the Higgs field in various ways. All fields, including matter and force fields, exist everywhere but interact differently. Some particles in these fields ignore each other, while others interact, leading to reactions and complex structures. The collaboration of these fields covers everything we understand and observe, along with much that remains unknown and beyond our perception. Oddly, the creation of matter particles is an exception. For instance, an atom forms when there's enough energy in the quark fields to produce quarks that aren't destroyed by antimatter quarks though the reason for this is not fully understood. Physicists proposed that the visible universe consists of remnants that survive the constant creation and destruction of virtual particles. However, the particles making up dark matter are a different issue. Ultimately, everything, our world, you, me, the whole universe, amounts to a big bunch of nothingness. Even if you can picture an empty universe, this doesn't match reality. The universe has never been completely empty, and as long as dark energy exists, it never will be. The universe is the way it is, and while we try to understand it as much as we can, we should remain humble in the face of its vast unknowns. My only advice is to embrace the curiosity that drives us to explore, question, and uncover its mysteries.